My name is Rhonda Schwenk and this is my daughter Alexis. Uh, she is five years old and we are from Lloydminster, Alberta and we both suffer from asthma. I had pneumonia as a teenager and from that I developed asthma and also have had allergies my whole life so I've dealt with uh, asthma and continued to deal with asthma and so it definitely has a, had its drawbacks as far as activities that I can partake in and limitations. Uh, and now watching my daughter suffer from, from asthma it is kind of tough. She had croup and bronchitis uh, numerous times as a baby. At the age of two, she uh, was put on daily dosages of a couple different medications and um, it still didn't seem to, to control her asthma. Having asthma myself and watching my daughter go through it, that, that's kind of tough because I, I, although honestly she, she's a, a tough nut and doesn't show, um, the, the emotional side of that it like it sucks and it hurts and it's uncomfortable. Um, I I know what she's feeling like and just to see her resilience in that it like it, it's heartbreaking. My name is Dr. Bernard Thibault. I'm an AIHS clinical scholar at the University of Alberta. I work in the Department of Pediatrics and my research interest is in lung development, injury and repair. 300 million people in the world have asthma and uh, there are efficient treatments for asthma, the puffers that we give to open up the lungs, they work very well and puffers that we give to uh, decrease the inflammation in the lungs, they, they are very efficient um, ways of, of preventing the complications of asthma or treating asthma. However, there are still uh, 250,000 people that die every year from asthma because of fatal asthma attacks in which these medications are not efficient. So I think uh, there is still some space for improvement and uh, come up with better ways of treating asthma or preventing the complications of asthma. What we did was to create a mouse model that mimics asthma, uh, then cultured these uh, mesenchymal stem cells that we knew had therapeutic benefits in other diseases. And then instead of taking the cells, we took the juice of these cells. And then we gave this juice of these cells into the nostrils of these animals. So we'd go into the airways. And then we looked at lung function testing. And we could show that the ones that had the, um, asthma had chest tightening, closed airways, inflammation. And when we give the stem cell juice, we could show that they didn't have the chest tightening uh, the bronchi were open, the airways were open, and there was uh, decreased inflammation. As a neonatologist, a baby doctor, obviously we had our focus on the chronic lung disease of, uh, of babies. But when we saw that these cells were able to attenuate inflammation, prevent fibrosis, prevent oxidative stress, and by reading the literature, that showed us that these cells also have some other healing or effects, that's when we realized that, well, this is not a single medication that you can give to one disease. It may work in other diseases as well. So that's what we did. We looked at asthma, we looked at ARDS, we looked at fibrosis. And sure enough, in all these diseases, these cells seem to work. The mechanism might be different, but the fact is they work. Our focus is obviously to bring it into patients, and obviously we want to do that as fast as possible. We hope that uh, between five or ten years we could see some benefit from stem cell based strategies. So my hope is that we can identify new medications that are more efficient to treat asthma and ultimately to decrease the number of deaths due to asthma. Uh, just to be aware that there are people out there um, like Bernard that are working to find cure and give us that hope and, and that, that peace in the future is truly exciting.